This is Trey Brady with Roundabout.com, the Boxing Roundtable. How are you, sir? Um, pretty good. All right, great. I just had a couple of questions for you. Um, congratulations, first off. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Seth Mayhem Mitchell, the NABO Heavyweight Champion of the World, representing Clinton, Maryland. How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. It was very funny. Uh, it's really exciting. Uh, and for the last Quick question for you, sir. Um, Seth uh, had a trying fight in his last fight against Chaz Witherspoon. As his trainer, uh, Mr. Hunter, what changes are you making in the training of Seth after the scary moments he witnessed in round one against Chaz Witherspoon? Uh, basically, he has to uh, keep it. He got hit. You're going to get hit in boxing. I don't care what you do. We do all the training, trying to fit for everything, but anytime you throw a punch, you're open for a counter. Right. But what I what I saw was um, Chance was trying to counter his jab with a right hand every time he threw it, and he threw a jab in a low position, but you know came over top. So we're just keep working on every throwing, keeping his left hand high and feinting a little bit so we can get these guys to leave first. Gotcha, gotcha. Now. I, me personally, I've seen a ton of Seth's fights. I've never seen his chin tested before. He, I mean, he literally ran through, and that's a little box, a little football joke. He ran through Tamor Bragamov. Um, as he steps his level of opposition up, um, being able to move his head, guard his chin, um, what would you suggest should be his number one training regimen for being able to keep out of harm's way? Yes, he's going to get hit, but how do you um, combat that as his trainer? Going uh, over and over, going steps directly uh, to space. But you, you're not going to get away from every punch. Right. Now, if you can hit somebody, you're going to get hit in terms. But the thing is not to take a shot clean. Gotcha. You've got to deflect it, go with it, or have your hand up or something. You don't yeah. want to take it clean. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we'll work on as much as possible, but you're still going to get hit. Right, another question for you, uh, uh, Mr. Hunter. Um, during the HBO telecast and other telecasts we watched recently, um, the commentators were very vocal in saying that Seth fights like a football player turned boxer. Do you see that? And if so, does that concern you? Not at all. He don't. He's fighting like a boxer. It's a football story. That's, that's the thing him coming from football. But uh, I really don't think they gave him enough credit. The skill level that he has as a fighter, you know, they they they're just seeing stuff. I see stuff every day training. It's fun. Okay? I know the skill level that he has, so it's new to them. It's not new to me. But uh, calling him a football player, that's to me one thing. You know, man has a lot of skill, and, you know, and they'll see. He can't help but he knock them out early. <laughs> uh, so, so basically, you're saying your fight is an athlete. He can adjust. He's a fighter that can adjust. He can box. He can move inside. He got the knockout power. The things. So he did what's needed for that night. Right, right. Now, as a trainer with a fighter who fights, standing uh, based on uh, boxrec.com's uh, stats, six feet two inches tall and two hundred forty-one and a half pounds. Tell me what you think about the installation of a super heavyweight division. Would a super heavyweight division allow the American heavyweight division and worldwide heavyweight division revitalize itself? Considering you have superhuman fighters such as Lennox Lewis, the Klitschko's, Nikolai Valuev, Michael Grant, and Henry Akawande standing six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. I really don't like the super heavyweight division because the heavyweight is heavyweight. Once you get over that uh, 200 something pounds, you're heavyweight. When you're going to be a small heavyweight or big heavyweight, you still have advantages being small and you have advantages being big. Sometimes you're too big. So, uh, I like it the way it is. I mean, if they did make a super heavyweight division, it would probably take away from 
Because the only way to give him himself, the one that would be the low ass way to give him a father's house, father's house, father's Right. Right. Now, um, one last thing, and I'm going to let you go, brother. What do you feel as though you being the, the, the trainer of Seth Mitchell, what does Mr. Andre Hunter bring to the table? What is Seth Mitchell going to bring to the table in his next fight? What do we have to look forward to? Well, I don't, I don't try to predict it. But we have uh, a lot to look forward to because the man is uh, getting better and better each fight. So what I bring to the table and what I always love to say about myself is work on things um, for him to get better, uh, to study taste, and to do all this so he can cruise and step as a fan friendly fighter. So that's about it. Mr. Andre Hunter, you are the nicest guy I've interviewed today, and I guarantee you that your name will ring bells in the future along with Seth Mitchell. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, interview you today, and we cannot wait to see you again soon. Thanks.